Good morning, everybody. Let me change my camera view so it can come back over here. Hey, all right, there we are. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the second to last class already. Uh, welcome to Landscape Painting from Beginning to End, Class 5, Part 1. And uh, I wanted to start today's class by answering a couple reoccurring questions um, that I've gotten. And I figure since, you know, it's literally called from beginning to end, um, I'm going to do it in reverse order. I'm going to end or finish uh, a couple paintings, hopefully, <laughs> see how they go, but really quickly. And I want to talk about, um, about glazing, and I want to talk about adding fog and atmosphere over a painting. So I'm hoping that that's useful and interesting to everybody. So that's going to be the first portion of our class. The second portion of our class, part two, uh, video part two, is going to be me blocking in the uh, scene that we all chose of the forest and the creek. And I'm going to do that. Well, I guess I should ask you guys, but my intention was to do it with acrylics. Um, and I'm just going to use a burnt umber, white, and a little bit of black to do that. Um, and uh, that way I can block it in really quickly. And that way next week it'll be completely dry and I'll come back over and finish the painting by adding oil paints with a lot of color and interesting brushwork and all of that. I know, Gail, that you started yours with oil and it's beautiful. Um, are you guys okay if I start it with acrylics just to kind of show you a whole nother method? So I'm showing you guys three or four different ways that I start painting throughout this course. Um, this is a great way, especially because I've been very fortunate to be able to do a number of um, commissions and I've got a couple other, gosh, I just got three more commissions this week, um, maybe even four. And uh so the turnaround time on these, of course, is short because who wouldn't want it for Christmas? <laughs> we'll see if that actually happens, but um, they're all OK if it doesn't. But uh, they're huge, too. Uh, it's a 36 by 60, a 30 by 60 and a 20 by 60, which is so weird. I've never painted anything like in that proportion and all of a sudden to get three commissions. Oh, and also a 16 by 20. Um, so it's really interesting to be getting all these. Thank goodness the uh, art supply store is having a big sale on canvas. So, and I'll be doing them on canvases because they need to be shipped. So I will roll them up. Uh, good news is I shipped my big uh, Tuscan paintings, Tuscany paintings to the East Coast. And I did end up rolling those up um, into a tube. Um, so if you guys have any questions about shipping large work, um, I've been learning a lot that uh, recently, and they got there fine um, and in good shape. And in fact, they're being restretched and framed uh, today. So that's neat. Um, yeah. Um, you guys have any questions to start with? Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the easel. Yeah, Michelle. Just real quick, I'm curious um, when you when you paint something and then send it. Uh, ship it rolled up do you start with it on a on a I mean obviously it has to be on a frame how do you how do you do that or do you you don't buy an existing framed canvas and unstaple it and then do it is that what you do that's what I did so far um now I have a number of those um stretcher bars set up um mm -hmm. and my galleries in California all want uh on canvas and then they restretch and reframe them there which is great for me um, so what I do oftentimes is I actually just um, use the wood panels that I have and stretch canvas over the top of that by just putting a couple uh, staples into the back. And um, but now that I have a number of stretcher bars because I needed different sizes than I had in panels, um, I can just restretch canvas. So I have a huge. In fact, you can see it. Nope, that side. Back, back there, you see that long tube there back in the corner? That is actually just a giant, giant roll of canvas. Um, and then I will put a you know, number of coats of gesso on that, sand it down. And uh, yeah, and what I've also learned is that oils can take being rolled up easier than acrylics. 
So if I'm rolling up acrylics, I just want to make sure that they're unrolled as quickly as possible. Um, I guess acrylics can crack a little more. Um, oils are a tiny bit more flexible, evidently. So just learning all this as I'm going. Good to see you, Sandy. Glad you're here. I'm just talking about you um, <laughs> in a good way. Um, oh, she's gone. <laughs> 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 um yeah so it is an interesting thing and it really does feel weird to roll your painting up it feels very scary uh, I put some kind of a, a wax shipping paper in between because I put the two it was uh two paintings in the commission and I put them together but it was with wax paper in between and then I used the thin um I don't know uh it's kind of a soft packing material um i don't know what oh, it's, it's kind of like a thin foam yes exactly yeah. flexible foam so i put multiple layers of that um yeah they actually made a joke that i sent them a sarcophagus because it was so well packed and so <laughs> uh but i really wanted to make sure it got there you guys probably heard that i lost one of my great big paintings that i shipped down to my gallery and you know it was a five thousand dollar painting that just went missing so it can happen. It is scary. Um, I lost that one completely. The, these commissions, I made sure that I insured them fully. And then what I also did, which is kind of an interesting idea, is I didn't put anything about art on the labels. I actually Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, I called it a banner because I'm positive. I'm you know without a doubt <laughs> that the UPS people actually stole it. And in conversations with them, they're, you know, apologetic, but they're not going to do anything about it. But they were literally just saying, yeah, we can't control who we hire right now. We're so shorthanded and we can't even, you know, check back, do background checks hardly. So. I wonder if that person would try to sell it. I keep looking. I do a reverse image search on Google just to see if it pops up on some kind of an auction site or something. Um, who knows? I have no idea. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully it's hanging in their house <laughs> and they like it <laughs> or they gave it to their mother. Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyways, just keep painting, just keep painting. And for the most part, I've been exceptionally lucky with shipping. Um, that was the first major incident I've ever had in over 20 years. So, um, so Sandy, the reason I was saying, I'm so glad you're here is because, um, I believe it was you a class or two ago that asked about, um, painting fog is that right are you there sandy yep yeah i did great and then i know a couple other of you including linda and michelle were asking about adding atmosphere um and pushing things back but using uh glazing and paint so i want to talk about that so my plan for the first hour of class is to do three quick demos two in oil over acrylic underpaintings and one in acrylic over an acrylic painting. So I can show how I do fog and atmosphere in both mediums. And then because I'll be pulling out my acrylic secondly, I will be doing the beginning of the uh, creek in the forest with acrylic, setting that up. And then we will finish the class, hopefully the third hour. Um, we're just gonna see how things go. And uh, I like your cat, Gail. Um, <laughs> uh, I have a cat that always wants to jump on the keyboard and march around whenever I'm working. Um, I will be uh, and, uh, taking a look at all your guys' beautiful work. And I really, really appreciate you guys sharing what you're doing, sharing the different steps, the, the successes and the heartache, both. We're learning together from all of that. And then more importantly than that even is I really do appreciate how many responses you guys are giving to each other and how much input, advice, feedback, and adoration that you're sharing with each other. I think that that's really important. And I think that's one of the biggest benefits of having a nice group like this and having the Padlet page where we can be sharing and helping each other. So anyways, are we ready to jump up to the easel, everybody? Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Let's change cameras. All right. 
So this was one of the iterations of the edits that I did. Um, I flipped it and uh, kind of did it this way. I kind of like where it is. Uh, I'm not disappointed, but I thought, you know what? This is a great opportunity in this one to show glazing. I'm going to be using um, transparent paints over the top, both warms and cools. And then I'm going to be introducing the idea of uh, fog. So I'm going to be doing kind of a, excuse me, a uh, very kind of a, the sun will be coming from the white, kind of a sunrise. I'm, in fact, all three of these demos that I'll be doing, I'm kind of imagining a sunrise. I don't know about where you live, but typically it's foggier in the morning and not as foggy in the evening. We don't really get foggy sunsets very often, but we very, very often living in wet, wet Oregon. In fact, it's flooding outside right now. Um, I've had five days of rain. Um, and uh, But anyways, the mornings here are just gorgeous if you're into the kind of atmospheric fog effects, which, you know what, I'm going to tell you the truth. When I first uh, bought my first house out in Hillsboro, Oregon, it was a very, very foggy year. And the first couple of months, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so dreary and dense. And then slowly I started, you know, going for walks and things, started really appreciating the fog and really finding the kind of mystical without sounding too, you know, woo woo about it. But this kind of mystical, magical feeling of just kind of that hidden uh, elements. And I loved how certain parts were revealed, especially as uh, the um, as things came forward. You know, you have these different layers. I like to think of it like like looking through sheets of gossamer fabric. Right. You guys all have had that where, you know, gossamer fabric and it's kind of you can see through it pretty much. You can make out some detail. But then when you have two sheets of it, like on, you know, on uh, little girls dresses and tutus and whatnot, um, it gets a little more obscure. And then you add another and it becomes really obscure. I like to think of atmosphere in that way. The further things are away from me, the more layers of fog or the more layers of this gossamer sheeting. Right. And as things come forward, there's less and less of that. So things further away become more obscured, harder to see, harder to make out detail. And as things come forward, generally, you know, it can be really, really dense fog, but generally things begin to reveal themselves. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm not sure how I came up with that. I'm sure somebody told it to me or I read it somewhere, but that's how I literally think of it is like, I can almost say, oh, there's 10 sheets of gossamer between me and those mountains in the back, right? I can barely, barely, barely see them, maybe just the outline. And then the trees, you know, in the field. And then as things come forward, things begin to reveal themselves more. So that's going to be my thought process and mindset going into these three paintings. Give me one second while I get up from the computer and walk over to the easel and uh, grab a quick sip of lemon water. All right. So as you can see right now, I have a fairly clear scene. We have you know some detail on the tops of these trees and everything else. With glazing, which I'm going to be doing with oils, and then in the third one I'll be doing with acrylics, I want to generally kind of consider using more transparent colors. So the colors I chose today are titanium white, which is kind of my always go to. I could use a transparent white if I had one, um, but I don't have a tube of that right now. This is just a cheap uh, yellow from Utrecht um, studio series called primary yellow. It, I know that it's semi-transparent because it's just a really cheap paint filled with lots of fillers. This is my favorite um, transparent color is the Indian yellow. This is a cadmium red. So this red 
is not going to be transparent at all. In fact, it's very opaque. This is quinacridone red, which is a very transparent red, but a cooler red leans a little more towards purple. Um, the color, this blue that's up here kind of as a little bonus color is King's Blue Deep. Just if you're curious, it makes beautiful grayed down purples, um, which I kind of thought might be interesting in some elements of the sky. I've got Ultramarine Blue, which let's see here, um, is generally a transparent or a semi-transparent. Um, manganese Blue, which is considered a transparent. This is Payne's Gray over here which um, is not usually considered a transparent, but I am using the 1980 version, which is the cheaper kind of student quality version from Gamblin. And I actually really like this Payne's Gray. And it is in fact, trying to see if it actually says, it does not say on the back, but it is far more transparent than the more expensive Ultramarines. I mean, Payne's Gray, sorry. Um, and then besides that, I have a little bit of liquid paste. Uh, when going over a uh, acrylic painting with oils, it is suggested that we use at least 5% uh, medium. So just so you know, it will help alleviate cracking in the future. Uh, oils over acrylics can, do, can have some cracking as they dry. Um, this acrylic painting is very dry. I think it's probably at least a week old. So I'm not worried about the moisture in here at all. It's completely cured. But I will be adding just a touch of the medium. And then I will be also using just a touch over here on the right side. I have my big old bucket of uh, paint thinner, which is the Gansol paint thinner by Gamblin, which is a little more uh, mellow. So Michael, can you please ahead. repeat the um, medium? It is a liquid called oleopasto. Um, it's a liquid paste. I could be using the Galkid gel, which I really like as well. Um, the reason I chose the liquid, you know what? I wonder if I should change. I don't know. The oleopasto, the, the thing I like about this is compared to the Galkid gel is it dries a little less shiny. Almost all mediums uh, add a shine or a, a gloss to your paints, uh, which is fine and keeps the colors looking a little fresher. But I, um, with some of my galleries, that makes the paintings very glary, especially if they're large. And, uh, you know, depending on the lighting conditions, um, it can be a little bit rough. So I've been looking for mediums that are a little more uh, matte when they dry. And uh, so far the liquid oleopasto is a pretty good one. Um, it's thick, you can see it's just sticking there. If I put the Galkid gel beside it, it'll probably be a little runnier. Yeah, a lot runnier, you can see it already just running down the side of the thing here. Um, it's slipperier. But I, I mean, I love them both, and I, I could probably mix them. Yeah, really slippery. Um, so anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the sun coming from the right side, coming across and hitting the trees on their right side, and I'm gonna end up including some fog. What I wanna do is I'm gonna warm up the sky with some quinacridone red along the horizon a touch and Indian yellow. It's gonna really warm this up. I'll have to remember to bring some of that into my reflection. And I'm gonna also bring that Indian yellow across these grasses as if the sun is really lighting these up. And then I'm gonna mix a little bit of that Indian yellow with whatever colors it is I decide to put on the trees. And then I'm gonna add some fog back here and kind of obliterate some of these trees and maybe some of the base of this a little bit. So softening that up. And then what I was thinking I would do is bring in my probably, a, probably my ultramarine blue into some of these shadow areas to really kind of cool them down to make the warms even feel warmer. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So here we go. Let's get a little crazy. I'm just going to add just a touch of this 
oleo pasta, maybe even a touch of that, just so it's not so sticky. Take some of my Indian yellow. I grabbed um, some old brushes that, you know, they used to be flats, but I've worn them down. I just want to make sure I'm not using really good brushes when I do a lot of my glazing because I will do, I will be kind of scrubbing. I will be kind of tough on my brushes. So using some kind of tougher, old beat up brushes that, you know, I'm not ruining them. You can see how much warmer that is already, right? And you can see how transparent it is when I come over the trees. You can see the trees completely still. I've just changed their temperature a little bit. I'm just scrubbing that in there. The nice thing is I've got a little while to work with this, with the oils. You know, if these, if I was glazing with acrylics, which I will be demoing it here in a little bit, I've got to be much faster. But by glazing over acrylics or old or dry oil paintings with uh, oils, I've got some time. In fact, I can completely change my mind and wipe this right back off, especially with just a touch of paint thinner. I can get, I can get way back. So if I change my mind or I think, wow, that was too strong, that's too much, it's not the effect I wanted, I can change my mind. So that's a fun thing. Um, a lot of times when people glaze, they'll glaze the entire surface, which is great. Sometimes that's a beautiful effect. Um, but I want to show you that I can do spot glazing as well. I already like the feeling of these grasses much more. It's really uh, getting a more con Vincing feel of the fall of the light really raking across here. A lot of times I kind of almost think of Indian yellow as the color of sunshine of warm sunlight. Um, you know, you don't have to add too much. Sometimes just a little dab will do you. Just if you need to warm up an area that's being hit by light, let's say, well, this would be a good example for you, Don, um, in your paintings where you were kind of uh, painting white to uh, get the feeling of light, not this week, but the week before, you can actually come back in and just kind of glaze in some warmer colors over that sometimes, and you'll get some really nice effects. All right, I'm gonna come back in with a touch of quinacridone, and I'm gonna put that right along kind of the tops of some of these trees, just kind of even warming that up. I'm going to do that in the transition also from where the grasses are folding over from the uh, the warm tops of them towards the shadows a little bit. And that'll give me kind of a transitional glaze color, kind of a going from the yellowy oranges to the more reds. And then in the shadows, I'm going to let those be a little more purple and blue. Just to really, if you want things to feel warm, it's really helpful to have some areas that feel cool. Just like if you want to have really strong sense of light, it's really helpful to have some areas of dark. Any questions so far? No. No? Okay. Gonna bring some of that quinacridone into the top of the sky. One of the drains. I wondered about that, Michael. Yeah. Um, this is Gail. I can. Uh, would you suggest that I? use this technique, this glazing technique over the underpainting I did just to get it going and build the paint up? I really like to do that, especially if I just want to kind of, you kind of did that in your painting of the um, lily pads and stuff. Yeah. I, I will sometimes do it because a lot of times people will finish what they're glazing, but I find that you can, you know, especially if you don't add too much medium and make it too slippery and shiny, that you can, you know, it's just a great way to kind of Sneak up on it. Stain the canvas and kind of get things, you kind of get a nice innate color harmony going really quickly. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, sometimes I do do that. Um, and in fact, you know, for next week, after I do the acrylic painting um, for the creek, I was kind of thinking about that, like, oh, I could come back in and glaze in even green, because there's so much green in that painting, or maybe the Indian yellow. And then, so I have this really warm light in the background that I can, you know, cover up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's definitely worth experimenting with, Gail, okay. um, and just kind of see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of remove some of that. Just taking my paper towel, it just kind of pulls up some of it. I know that I want some cooler areas, and I'm going to get back into the sky. Because I do know, too, that I'm going to come back in and add some actual, you know, some. I'm going to add some of those blues. So if I have too much orange, those blues are just going to turn to brown, right? You know, orange plus blue makes brown. So I just kind of am aware of that. Um, some of the areas where I know I'm going to get cooler in the sky, maybe I'll remove a little more of that. So I am thinking, you know, towards the future a little bit, just saying, okay, you know, I know that my sky is going to get cooler towards the top. My water will get cooler towards the bottom. I'm going to bring some cools into the shadows. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some white. And I'm going to bring in a feeling of warm fog. In the next one, we're going to have in the next demo that I'm going to bring up here in just a second or well, a couple of minutes, I'm going to uh, make cooler fog. But this one, again, the light's coming from the right, streaming across. So it's really going to be making this fog quite glowy. So I'm just going to bring a stripe of that it's it's it is white mixed with some of the yellow I could you know I can continue to warm that up if I want but I feel it's getting a little cool all right I'm going to take and clean that brush in fact what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab a brush that doesn't have any paint on it I'm going to make sure I think it has a little paint dinner on it so I'm just going to make sure I get that off and I'm just going to do a little bit of almost like scumbling which means just kind of pushing or dry brushing I find with fog and with light, I don't usually want too much medium. You can see now just the tops of the trees is kind of showing over the fog. I can even push the tops of the trees back a little bit so they're not quite as bright. You can kind of hear those scrubbing noises a little bit. Wow. And hopefully that just kind of pushed it back. It looks like there's a layer of fog just kind of sitting on these grasses. I'm going to add a little more because I want it to come quite a ways forward. Like sitting in front of these trees just a little bit. It's a lot of trial and error, but again, the nice thing is, is if I really don't like it, I can just take my paper towel and remove a lot of that. I could, you know, if I feel like, oh, well, let's just do it real quick. I'm going to hide these trees. I'm going to put too much fog. All right, so now I've just kind of lost those trees back there. You see that? How I've just kind of wiped them away completely, but I don't want the fog that dense. So I'm just going to clean that brush off and remove a little bit of that fog and use a little bit of a paper towel. I'm just going to kind of tap at it a little bit, just kind of lifting up some of that paint, revealing some of those trees back there until I get the, the effect that I feel looks how I want it to look or how I you know, something that I think is interesting and beautiful. My fog back here, again, has got a number of layers of gossamer as it comes closer towards us, lower on the horizon. 
it's getting a little thinner, but the bottoms of these trees are still sitting in some fog. I can just kind of scrub in a little bit. Michael, I've had a problem where when I've tried to wipe off a little bit like you just did, um, and then the threads of the canvas show through. Yeah, it's canvas is much. tough. These are boards. The next one I'm going to be doing a demo on will be on canvas. Um, so yeah, I know canvas. That's one of the reasons, I mean, one of the many reasons I don't paint on canvas as often. Um, but yeah, so what you're going to want to do is if you know you're going to be painting something like this with canvas, you may want to put a couple extra coats of gesso on it um, just to kind of get rid of some of that texture. Um, I also try it when I do buy canvas, I will generally, if I can, try to buy as fine a weave as possible. I don't like a lot of texture on my canvas. What um, about linen? Linen's probably even more ideal. Yeah, linen's great. And uh, yeah, I don't paint on linen very much. I find it to be kind of slipperier than I often want. It's also a lot more expensive. And because I'm constantly just playing and experimenting, I try to not let my supplies be too uh, dear. I don't want to protect them because of their price or, you know what I mean? I've yeah. Got, like books, I've got like sketch pads that cost, you know, lots of money. Maybe they were gifts or whatever. And they're beautiful, you know, leather bound and everything else. And I just don't sketch in them because I'm scared. <laughs> so I just find, you know, cheaper in a lot of ways is kind of better, but it, you know, if I know that it's going to be a finished or good painting or for a client or for a show, then yeah. So you can see I'm also adding a little bit of fog. Um, the fog will generally kind of gather at the bottom. I should have maybe waited until I got some of these shadows a little cooler. But there you go. Does that kind of look like fog sitting back in there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. A little bit more, you know, if I want this bank that's furthest away from us to kind of roll back and look like it's Going back into depth a little more. You can do the same here. So just these hints of fog really kind of help. Um, obscure things. So that's, you know, one of the ways, and it's probably the easiest way that I do fog is by letting it dry. Um, there are times when I do wet into wet and get the fog. It's a little uh, less forgiving, but it sure can be nice. So let's get into a couple cools. Uh, I'm going to use some of this ultramarine blue. I should have cleaned the brush because I don't want any white on it, probably. And I don't, hopefully this will show. I'm going to add a little bit of manganese or uh, quinacridone, sorry, to make it kind of a dark purple. Just kind of building up a couple different values of purple there. It gets a little darker down at the bottom. Maybe even add a touch of Payne's gray to darken that one up, make it a little less vibrant. I'm going to scrub into areas where the shadows are, where the light's not hitting. Again, I'm just putting in some cools to make the warms feel even that much warmer. A little heavy handed, I can hear you thinking. Yes. <laughs> I want to cry for you now. <laughs> but let's just wipe it back a little bit. Okay. And it starts to reveal some of the texture, some of the color behind it. But it kind of stains, so it kind of leaves some of the cool colors in there where I want, again, this is the areas in the painting 
where the sun is not getting to, right? Again, it's coming across. I kind of imagine almost like a shadowy area in the foreground here. I could definitely uh, light all the right all the right sides of things, but I, I kind of like the idea of the foreground being maybe a little more in shadow and also add a little cool to my sky. just to make the warm area down at the bottom feel a little warmer. Same thing in the water. Get a little darker as it comes closer to us. So it's reflecting the top of the sky that we're not seeing, but I'm just assuming it gets a little darker. Plus, it'll make the water feel a little more like it's coming to us. Again, in this transition between that bright yellow. And the uh, blue, I'm probably going to add just a little bit of red, just so I have a transition color. Add a little white to that, it's a little on the bright side, I mean a little on the dark, dense side. Gonna take some finessing here in just a second. Right now, I'm just kind of laying in these colors a little heavy handed, but I have faith in myself. So I'll take that brush, clean it off. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in the paint thinner to make sure I get it really nice and clean. And then I really wanna make sure I get it dry. I could again pick up another brush at this point if I wanted to. Just a touch more red. I'm going to do the transition. So this is because it has that yellow, Indian yellow underneath. It's kind of beginning to blend with that a little bit, which I knew would happen. And I want it to happen. So you've got to think, you know, you can either let your glazes dry or you can use them a little bit to create kind of a feeling of harmony as it mixes with the colors that I put on top and I'm now kind of scrubbing in. I'm gonna take some of this cool purple. And I'm actually gonna hit it into these trees back here. I'm gonna cool these down a little bit too. Get down to the water and do the same thing in reverse. Cleaning my brush once again because I've touched it with a lot of the blues. Really making sure I get most all that paint thinner off because otherwise it'll make it slick and uh, move the paint over way around in ways I maybe don't desire. So dry brushing is a great tool when you're thinking about doing some of this glazing or just kind of coming in and manipulating. You see, I'm just kind of going over a lot of my detail in here. I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to be able to bring that back up, bring that back out with Q-tips, with my paper towel, or I can just paint back over because maybe I didn't even love all those grasses that I put in there. A lot of times that acrylic painting is just kind of my underpainting. This one was a little more on the detailed side, of course.
grab a clean paper towel. And I'm just going to wipe away some of that, revealing some of these grasses and stuff again. Soft here, and then I can hit a little harder where I want to. So what big changes, huh? That is a lot different than the just orange and yellow painting that we started with. Whether you like it better or not, it's you know completely up to you. But I think it's a fun example of how I really created like a warm to cool, uh, more fog, more atmosphere, hopefully a sense of depth. Um, and I could either just kind of let this dry and then come back in and refine areas that I want, or I could, you know, kind of kind of like it, but I'll definitely want to look at it here in a little while. And actually knock back this by just kind of wiping away softly. I just think that color is a little too strong. Make it a little more subtle. There we go. Kind of grade it down a little bit. Yeah, and it's not either or. Like I could come back in and add, you know, Indian yellow and maybe a touch of the quinacridone back into the where I want the light to really be hitting into these trees. I can, uh, yeah, I can just keep modulating it and having fun and experimenting and exploring. All right, thoughts? I I love it. It's quite the transition. I thought the acrylic was absolutely stunning, but now it's even, I don't know, it's just exquisite. Yeah, I don't know if it's better, but... <laughs> It's more. Uh, I like your grasses, maybe in the front, to be a little more pronounced. I don't yeah, know. I definitely can, and I could, you know, just grab some little brushes and, uh, you know, but it might be better when it's a little drier. But yeah, I can definitely. Yeah, yeah. just uh, to make it feel like it's in your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The other option, of course, is the Q-tips. I can just dip them in a touch of paint thinner, and I can really bring back quite quickly some areas that I want. Well, I see I don't have enough patience <laughs> with what I'm doing. I expect um, not too much, I think, of myself. It's, it's back and forth, back and forth. Like, you know, I kind of lose some areas. I can reveal them back out. I can, you know, it's just knowing that it's paint, so I can just keep layering it. I can keep changing my mind. I can keep modulating. I can keep having fun and experimenting. Yeah, and hopefully these darks are coming back. What's funny is they don't look as dark as they once did. There we go. They are, yeah. Better, I love that. That's perfect. And you're not compelled to have to add in green, even though maybe the initial reference might have had green? Uh, I mean, my color scheme was not thinking too much green, but yeah, I mean, I definitely could. Let's add a little green. And again, we'll just kind of glaze in with some blue, add a bit of our Indian yellow, some of this. Just because sometimes I don't know when to stop with regard to the different colors. Right, yeah, it just kind of, you know, more uh, more monochromatic or more, you know, working with the colors closer to each other on the color wheel. Um, but yeah, I mean, some green could definitely make, you know, bring out some hint, even if it's a really subtle green. Um, you know, and with the fog, a lot of times you're not going to get the green back there as much. But, you know, as the plants come closer, I can definitely bring in stronger hints of green if I want. So there's no, no, you know, just that's the good thing too, is I can just again say, oh, too much green or those brush strokes are a little too sloppy. But just hints of green, you know, I don't think anybody's gonna look at this painting and say, oh, look at those green grasses or green trees, but especially maybe in the transitions, 
between the warms and the shadows, I could invite some greens into play. But yeah, just I'm now I'm just kind of glazing with green. I don't know. Can you guys even see the green that I'm adding? A little bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's very subtle, but yeah. And maybe that's a good idea. Maybe let's just make it even a darker green. Add some Haynes Gray to that. Begin with the yellow. Haynes Gray makes really nice greens. This yellow over here is pretty awful. Um, it seems to have some white in it. So it's going to make kind of a, a gray green here. Maybe I can give it a little Indian yellow. Okay, that's good. You tease the senses. Now that's okay. We will imagine the rest. There you go. Yeah. It's like adding spices. A little bit, yeah. And let's say that, you know what? I actually want this sky to even be a little brighter, a little lighter. I'm just going to grab a smaller brush. I'm going to take a lot of white and a touch of my Indian yellow. Touch of medium. And let's bring a band of light. Across. I'm cleaning my brush off again because I put on a lot of paint and I don't need that much. So I'm just going to push some of that down. I want it to soften the edges of it. I'm modulating or changing my pressure of my strokes a little bit so that I get some blending. Again, because I know that these shapes back here are a little softer edge. Do the same with the top. Grab my paper towel, rip off a corner, make a little shape, and I'm just going to soften the top edge so it's not just this strong, strong angle. Adding a little more Indian yellow just to kind of, again, create kind of a transition from that red stripe down towards this brighter, lighter, yellowy light stripe, I hope. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing your light areas. Those yellow areas are catching some glare or, or there's a bright light when you put your hand in there too it really um washes out so it's hard to see and i apologize for that that's always been an issue in teaching over zoom what i'll do is i will move the camera in as i'm changing my uh the other thing i can do is always turn off the light Yay. <laughs> now I can see, but maybe that'll be better. How does that see appear for anyone else? I, I think I can see I, it better. I see it better. Yeah, and I think maybe I have the, the light setting on the camera a little bit strong. I'll see if I can adjust that. Because um, I am noticing that the sky felt a little bit washed out. It feels like it turned back on. <laughs> And I can't see it to paint. <laughs> oh, I need to. <laughs> it's kind of funny that it shows up as well as it does on the camera. But that is how I'll test a lot of my paintings is just turning the lights on and off and just kind of testing and seeing how. Uh... So I can just kind of knock in a couple little sky holes to make it so this tree's not just a big, big silly mass. 
I don't want it to be as bright as the sky. So I can mix a little bit of red in or something like that to make it just a touch darker. All right, let me move the camera so it's got a better angle on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and call that one good-ish. <laughs> so yeah, big change. I took a photo of the before. Let's turn the light off. So does that kind of show up for you okay? Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, oh, it really is. It's right? I mean, I don't know if it's better than the previous version or not. But I just wanted to show you glazing and doing some fog. And I'm going to kind of do the reverse in this next one because I added the warm light, warm fog. We're going to add a little bit cooler this next one. Or do you guys want me to just kind of skip forward and go to um, the acrylics? You guys want one more oil demo real quick? Yes, I, I do. Other yeah. Don, how are you doing? Is this interesting for you? I, I I like this a lot, Michael. It's very helpful. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to change my surface to another acrylic underpainting. So I kind of like where this one's going. It's I actually used fluorescent pink. My daughter, I think I talked about that last week, about using some of my daughter's paints that I found, the fluorescent colors. I've been experimenting a little bit with those, mixing them in with my acrylics. What I did was kind of a, a, a washy painting, and then I glazed over it with some of the um, fluorescent. When I turn on the lights, it'll be pretty extreme. Bang. Wow, it's really bright. Yeah. The the reflection today is washing out what you're doing right, right now. And I had a meeting with the camera people and they helped me do some, change some of my settings. So let me bring up the camera. Now I'm actually just gonna go ahead and stop the video. So we'll have little shorter videos here. <laughs> 